iPadOS 16 is officially available today. It includes a bunch of new useful features and also one polarizing feature that has everybody talking about what the future of the iPad can be. So in this video, we're going over everything new in iPadOS 16. Let's go ahead, roll the intro and jump in. So here I have my iPad Pro running iPadOS 16. If I go to settings, you can see that it is 16.1. And that's because iPadOS was actually delayed and we never had a 16.0 version of iPadOS. What's kind of funny is if we go into settings, we can see that the iPadOS version number is simply 16. And if we compare that to the iPhone, the iPhone actually says 16.1. When we click on this actual version though, we can see that the build number 20B79 is exactly the same as what we have on the iPhone. So even though iPadOS and iOS are technically separate things, we're seeing pretty much the exact same build of software with the exact same build number. The first change that you're gonna see when you update to iPadOS 16 is the new look on the lock screen. So you can see that the clock is now more bold and Apple has also moved the date to now live above the clock instead of below it. Also, before you unlock with Face ID, you can see that the padlock is a lot smaller now in iPadOS 16. And for whatever unknown reason, Apple has not added any of the customization options to the lock screen on the iPad that we have seen with the iPhone on iOS 16. So if I had to take a guess, I would say we're probably gonna see the same lock screen customizations come to the iPad next year with iPadOS 17, but as of right now, we don't have any of those customization options. iPadOS 16 also finally brings a built-in weather app to the iPad. So now whenever you tap on the weather widget on your home screen, as you can see here, it finally opens up in an actual dedicated application. Whereas before, it would just redirect you to the weather channel in Safari, which didn't really make any sense. So we get all of the improvements in this weather app that we have with iOS 16. Apple has made a ton of improvements in here and all of these sections inside of weather are actually interactable. And probably my favorite new piece of information is getting sunrise and sunset averages for every month of the year. So if I tap on sunset right here, you can see I'm getting an average of sunrise and sunset for each month of the year. And you can go through the weather app and tap on each section in here and get a detailed breakdown of the forecast. And something else that I'm hearing people are liking is before on iOS 15, you were only able to get an average temperature for a single day, but now you can actually tap on an individual day and get a detailed forecast breakdown. And you can also tap on this menu icon on the top left, and you can actually get weather notifications right on your iPad. So you can turn on alerts for severe weather and also for next hour precipitation. We also have some changes inside of notes. The first one is automatic sorting on the sidebar. So the system is going to sort this automatically for you. You can see in this folder I haven't touched in quite a while. It's sorting it by date. So I have previous 30 days, August, January, and then 2021 in general. And your sorting is going to be different based on how many notes and how frequently you edit the notes in that folder. So this is kind of a nice way to get some automatic sorting by the system. There's also a really cool new feature in Apple Notes that allows you to straighten your text automatically. So this is gonna come in really handy if you have an Apple Pencil and you find yourself writing at an angle on your iPad, which I sometimes do. So all you have to do is select the text inside of your note and you can see if you go to the next page here, you can tap on straighten. And just like that, the system is going to straighten your text. Next up is inside of photos. And just as we saw with iOS 16 on the iPhone, we can now select an object and remove it right from the background, even on the iPad now. So if I press and hold on this subject, you can see the system is going to pull it off of the background. If I want, I can pick it up and drag it anywhere I want on the iPad. I can also choose to copy it or share it right from here. So just for an example in this video, I'll go ahead and select this object and then tap on copy. And then let's go over to notes and then I can paste that PNG image right there without the background. And this feature goes beyond just your own photos. You can remove a subject off of the background, even from photos on the web. So if I take an image here from Google, I can press and hold on it, tap on copy subject, and then I can go into my notes, for example, and I can paste that image right here without the background. Another feature inside of photos that I think a lot of you are going to like is you now have to authenticate with either your passcode or face ID in order to see your hidden album or your recently deleted album. So this is a really nice change and adds a bit more privacy to your device. 
The Photos app also now allows you to copy and paste edits to a different photo. So if I tap on edit here, we'll make a few changes. We'll tap on auto and then maybe let's add a filter like this one. I'll tap on done. I can now tap on the menu icon on the top right and tap on copy edits. And if I move over to this photo, I can tap the menu icon again and I can tap on paste edits. And just like that, I can make all of those same changes to another photo. We also have some changes inside of files as well. So you can see that the UI looks a little bit different. The search bar is now at the top right and you can now click this little arrow next to the name of your folder and you can see a bit more information such as the size of that folder. And the Files app also allows us to now edit or add an extension to our files. To do this, you wanna tap on this button at the top and then tap on View Options and make sure Show All Extensions is turned on. Now, whenever I do this, if I tap on the name of a file, I can actually change the extension of that file. So if I wanna change this from a JPEG image to a PNG image, all I have to do is tap out .png, tap on Done, and the system is going to ask if I wanna change the format of that file. The Contacts app also has a few updates. So now in iPadOS 16, you can now create as many lists as you want. And also in the Contacts app, we now have duplicate detection. So if you have the exact same contact multiple times, the system is going to prompt you to delete those duplicates. And I forgot to mention this earlier, but we also have a section for duplicates inside of Photos as well. And just as we saw on the iPhone with iOS 16, we also have focus filters on the iPad as well. So if I go to my focus settings, I can tap on my do not disturb focus. You can see I've added a focus filter for my email. And when I'm in do not disturb, it's only gonna show emails from this specific Gmail inbox. So if I tap on done, you can see I am in my do not disturb focus. If I open up my email application, you can see it's only showing emails from that one inbox. It says filtered by focus. So this is kind of a nice way to change what content you see based on what focus mode you're in. iPad OS 16 also brings a pretty cool new feature to iPad Pro models. So this feature is called Stage Manager. And this is pretty much a new method for interacting with your applications on the iPad in sort of a window view. So previously on the iPad, when you would open up an application, it would take up the entire display as you see here. But now if I go into Control Center and turn on Stage Manager and then open up the same application, you can see it opens up in more of a window view here. And you can see in Stage Manager, we also have a sidebar on the left-hand side, so we can quickly switch between our recently opened applications. And Stage Manager also allows you to have multiple applications in the same view. So you can drag an application from the sidebar, from the dock, or even from your app library. So for an example, I'll drag Twitter from my dock, and I can place this right next to Safari. You can also resize these windows however you want to. So I'll make Twitter a bit smaller like this. And then as you can see, I have Twitter and Safari right next to each other. And possibly my favorite part of Stage Manager is having three applications open at the same time. And each one is about the size of an iPhone application. So I'll go ahead and make Safari a little bit smaller. And then I'll drag in music right here. And then as you can see, after I resize my music, I can have three applications running at the same time on my iPad. So this can be very powerful for a lot of people. I do have to say, however, that the windowing method on the iPad is a little bit finicky and the system can be a little bit picky as to where you can place each window. So you really don't get the free movement of the windows as you have on the Mac, for example. And if you wanna close any of these applications in the Stage Manager window, all you have to do is tap on the three dot menu at the top of the app and tap on close. And when you're in Stage Manager, you also have the option to make it a lot more immersive. So if you go into Control Center and press and hold on the Stage Manager icon, you can actually choose to turn off the sidebar and the dock as well. And doing this makes Stage Manager a lot more immersive and you can fill the entire display with all your windows. So that was just a very brief introduction to the Stage Manager feature. If you guys wanna have a more in-depth look and have us make a full dedicated video on this feature, let us know in the comments down below. A few last changes I wanna mention at the end here. The podcast application on the iPad now has a sidebar, so you no longer have to use the buttons at the bottom of the app to navigate. I think this new sidebar design is a lot better. And there's also a feature for the 12.9 inch iPad Pro with mini LED display. Inside display and brightness settings, if you have that iPad, you're gonna see a new toggle called reference mode. So this is pretty much gonna allow you to match the color of your iPad's display to a Pro Display XDR. 
And one final feature in iPad OS 16 that I think a lot of you are going to like is for iPad Pro models that have more than 256 gigs of storage, you can now use virtual memory swap. This is gonna allow you to take advantage of the SSD storage on your iPad and use it as RAM. So this can virtually bring your iPad from 12 gigabytes of RAM up to 16 gigs of RAM. So that's gonna do it for iPad OS 16. What I want you guys to do now is head into the comments and tell me, do you think Stage Manager is actually a useful feature or is it more of a gimmick on the iPad? If you guys enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And also, if you're not yet subscribed yet, make sure to hit the button down below and help us reach our goal of 400,000 subscribers. With all that said, my name is Michael with IDB and I'll see you in the next video.